everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the Art and Science of Watch Collection. Uh, today, what I'd like to do is to talk about one of the most important parts of the movement of your watch. Uh, it's called uh, the escapement. And what the escapement does, it, it manages the energy uh, received from the mainspring, which is housed inside what's called the barrel, where the big spring is. And it drives the gear chain and manages the rotation uh, speed of the hands. Now, this is what, watch, what mechanical watches are all about. And so that's what we're going to do today. And to, to get started, we're going to take a look at the, the most common uh, type of escape mechanism. And it's called a lever uh, escapement. Uh, the lever escapement is used in just about, well, most watches. Uh, from an Orient, the Orients use this, to this is my El Lara. It's This particular movement in it also uses a, a, a lever escapement. And lever escapements are fine, uh, and they have certain advantages to them. They, uh, they're, they're very good at resisting shocks and they're self-starting, so you wind up a watch and that thing will off it'll go. The problem um, with it is, is that it generates a lot of friction. And in order to to have things work right, there you, you have to have them oiled. Okay. So one of the um, one of the things that they've been trying to do is, of course, to reduce friction. And they also uh, want to have a an impulse go more directly to the uh, to the gear chain. All right, so uh, these are two different kinds of, of issues. That one, of course, is is getting your uh, your shock resistant movement going, and the other is to be as direct to the gear chain as possible from the power generated by the mainspring. Okay, so uh, what they what they developed after the uh, lever escapement. It's called the detent escapement, or some people call it the uh, chronometer escapement. And the the problem <laughs> with the uh, detent escapement is that first of all they're they're fairly big, and uh, they they weren't self-starting and they were subject to shocks, and uh, but they were uh, there were far less friction involved in them. Uh, and it's sort of a cool looking movement the way, way that goes compared to the uh, compared to the uh, lever movement. Okay, well, uh, the next thing they tried was that uh, they said, well, what we need is we need to combine those two in such a way that um, we'll have the best of both worlds. We'll have the um, uh, the impulse going more directly to the gear chain, and yet we'll have the self-starting and shock resistance of the, um, of the lever. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, so this is the, uh, George Daniels is one of the most famous uh, watch designers in, for mechanical watches ever. Uh, he was uh, F.P. Jorn's mentor, among others. He just was one of these really brilliant uh, uh, watchmakers and designers came up with something that was called the coaxial um, movement and uh, if you look at it it looks like you've got a, uh, a rotary saw on the outside it looks like somebody holding a big rotary saw and on the inner on the inner part of it is looks like a ninja throwing star and these were the coaxials there was a single axle and you had these two escape wheels one was on the bottom the big buzzsaw looking one and then the one on the top uh was a was a ninja <laughs> what i call a ninja there's probably a better term for it than that all right so let's take a look and see how it works and as you can see the it there's very little friction involved uh, another point is is that notice how far the teeth are from one another the, the closer and the more the teeth there are the more contact points you're going to have, which is, is going to increase the friction. And if you have increased friction, then you need to uh, have oil pretty regularly because the oil will wear out and dry out and everything else. 
on it. So uh, that's an important part to, uh, to have in that. But what this does, by minimizing the friction, it minimizes the uh, need for repair. Now, uh, the, the company that really launched the, in terms of what we might call the practical use of the, uh, of the coaxial is Omega. And, uh, or, or maybe it's called Omega. I've, I've heard them both. I'll call it Omega. I think that's, I think that's the proper one. And anyway, the Omega uh, 2500 was the first uh, one they had. And it was uh, sitting on top of a, uh, an ETA. And it was a, you know, a, it was, it worked very well, exactly as, as they hoped it would work. Uh, some have suggested that um, perhaps the, uh, the ETA uh, 2892A2, which is the one that they used, uh, perhaps maybe they could have done their own in-house, but that's not the point. The point is, is that it didn't matter if you had an ETA on there or not, you had a really good escapement system using the coaxial. Well, in order to try to beef it up, <laughs> make it better, uh, Omega came out later uh, with the, the Omega coaxial 8500. Now, the, the first well, at first they had them on um, like C-Masters. C-Masters is the one that I always remember before, but they had it on a lot of other of their watches too. And if you get an Omega, well, you get one with a coaxial. I mean, they have some, there's, there's, there's some around without the coaxial. And, they, and if there are, they shouldn't be charging very much for them. Get the ones with the coaxial if you can. Even, even with an ETA in it, uh, your, your coaxial uh, escapement is going to improve the performance of the watch and not require as many trips to the watchmaker for cleaning and oiling and so forth. One of the more interesting uh, innovations that came along uh, for the coaxial was Roger Smith. Roger Smith makes handmade watches. I think he makes 10 or 11 a year and they're brilliant. And what he did, uh, you can, you can uh, see this, his uh, single coaxial escape wheel. Now remember, coaxial was having two escape wheels on the same axle. Well, uh, you could have a single escape wheel that had, there was really two wheels in one. And, and what he did, he simply uh, put the uh, teeth uh, on an inner, on the inner part of the escape wheel, and then had the longer ones on the outside. Also, too, he cut back uh, a lot of any kind of excess metal. Now, remember the first one we looked at, you had this big round thing and it, with the teeth around it. And now all they did was to cut away uh, all of the space and then have these, uh, these arms out for where they had the teeth on the end of them. Now, the reason for this was that uh, he, made, he made the, first of all, he made the wheel smaller and then he combined two wheels into one still giving the coaxial movement, but it made it lighter. And he found out that if the uh, coaxial escape wheel was lighter, the watch worked better. And so this was sort of the, I think to me anyway, the epitome of what can be done with a, uh, a good coaxial movement. Unfortunately, uh, Smith's watches, uh, they're very, very dear. Uh, like in the hundred thousand dollar neighborhood. Okay, well, um, the the next one I want to take a look at is a is by um, Gerard Perigo. This was a, a brilliant. And it's the only word for it. A brilliant movement, and uh, in fact, it was so brilliant that uh, in 2013, uh, the uh, the constant escape. Uh, escapement movement won the Aiguille d'Or at the, which is the 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 top prize at the um, Grand Prix d'Horlogerie de Genève. So this was it was no small thing. Now what they had and what they used was so interesting. They they used what is a buckling effect. Now if you hold a piece of cardboard or something like this or a piece of plastic and you push it 
on either end, at some point it will buckle. And when it buckles, it pops. Uh, uh, not too long ago in Atlanta, they had, because uh, of the <laughs> problem they were having with the road, this uh, highway buckled. And the power of it uh, was, was really substantial. Well, they use, instead of seeing buckling as a problem, they use the force of, of buckling to pop the, um, the escape wheel to, to, move, to, to move the, um, uh, to release the, the power from the, uh, from the mainspring. And uh, uh, it has, uh, there are two, you can see the two escape wheels side by side, not, on, they're not the coaxial, but they're side by side. But notice they only have three teeth. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 uh, uh, which, now why only three teeth? Well, remember the problem with the more teeth you have and the more contact with a, with a pallet, uh, the more friction you're going to have. And so this is, this is the way they did it. They use this, uh, silicon blade and the buckling from it to, uh, to release, <laughs> to release the, uh, the power of the uh, of, of the spring, and he did it consistently. So this is why the the whole notion of constant power is such that you you want to be sure that it's the same amount of power is generated with every single vibration. And uh, this was a very innovative way. Of doing it, and uh, here's the watch that won the uh, grand prize for that. And one of the other interesting things, you can see the escapement right in the front of the watch. It has this thing that they call a, a butterfly frame that goes around it that holds everything in place. And so they just popped it right up front where you could look at it. And uh, it, it's a very interesting uh, kind of thing. Okay, well, uh, this is. One of the things I, I want to talk about, there are a lot of different ways that they try to have a constant force, some of which we talked about. I think one was Rimantois de Galate, which is like, a, you know, about two or three watch companies have that, and that's about it. Uh, but the, um, the coaxial, I think, is a, is, is a very interesting one. And this uh, constant uh, uh, escapement that uh, Gerard Perigo has is also a really something that will provide the kind of, of clockwork that is, is, is really superb. Unfortunately, the uh, Gerard Perigo, <laughs> those are pretty expensive. I think the best deal I found on one was something like $60,000. So, um, and, you know, for, for anyone who really wants good mechanical time, it's, they're hard to beat. Okay, well, now we have uh, on uh, Sunday, uh, we have our uh, collection review. But between now and then, I'd, I'd really like to hear from you. I, I know a lot of people, you know, they don't care about their movement or anything like that. But I, I think that th these kinds of issues for watch collectors are, are important for mechanical uh, watch collectors. Uh, you have a whole set of different problems with the... Um, uh, electric watches and with uh, quartz watches and so forth, but for mechanical watches, to me, it's it's one of the uh, it, it's where you have the real genius. It's it, it's like you know if you're working on your car, you want to optimize the mileage or some aspect of it. The same is true with watches, and this is uh, I think the escapement is is one of the most interesting aspects of watches. Okay, now your comments are very very important, so please leave a comment. And I'd like to hear what you have to say. I know that the um, there are certain critics about the uh, Omega uh, coaxial. Mainly, they pour a little too much oil in with it uh, for some reason. But I don't even know if, how if they did it to the point where it, it's it's a problem. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's hear what you have to say. Love to hear from you. See you on Sunday for the collection review. Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection.